Question, have you ever wondered why it takes a lot of force when you begin to stir a can of paint? Then after a few stirs, it becomes easy, kind of like a piece of cake? Oh, not the real cake. Oh, come on, you know what I mean. Well, we can see similar behavior in foods also. Have you ever noticed that some substances like peanut butter stick inside of the jar? If you were to flip this jar upside down, nothing would happen. But if this jar was full of water, it would spill out all over the table. Welcome to the world of rheology. The differences in how materials flow is due to differences in what is called their flow behavior. There are four main categories of flow behavior. Newtonian, shear thinning, shear thickening, and Herschel Bulkley. Flow behavior is determined by shear stress versus shear rate. Newtonian behavior is considered to have a linear relationship between the shear stress applied and the shear rate experienced by the fluid. The shear stress of a Newtonian fluid is the fluid's viscosity multiplied by the shear rate being experienced by the fluid. This means that the more force you apply to the fluid, the more the fluid will flow. Shear thinning and shear thickening fluids follow what is called power law dynamics. Shear thinning, as the name points out, thins as you apply more force and shear to that fluid. There are not many materials that will thicken when stirred, but many do thin out. Thinning occurs when you stir a cake batter or mayonnaise. The more you stir them, the easier it becomes to stir further. By the same note, shear thickening fluids become thicker as you stir them. This means that they put up more resistance to the stirring as you continue to mix them. You can see this acted out if you were to add cornstarch to hot water. The solution will thicken as the cornstarch granules swell. For these fluids that follow power law dynamics, the shear stress is calculated by taking the shear rate being experienced by the fluid, raising it to the power of the flow index, and multiplying that all by the proportionality constant, K. Well, apart from these fluids which begin to flow right at the moment you apply a force, there are others which like to sit, much like a sloth, until you apply enough pressure to get them to move, or in the case of a fluid, get it to flow. You can see this concept executed well while applying peanut butter onto a cracker. If you get the peanut butter onto the knife and begin to start by applying a small stress on the peanut butter and increase this stress gradually, there comes a point where the peanut butter begins to flow off of the knife and onto the cracker. At this point, the peanut butter has exceeded what is called the yield stress, or the force that needs to be overcome to produce a flow. The yield stress involves overcoming the inertia of the fluid and breaking its internal bonds to begin flow. Once the fluid begins moving, these fluids can show either Newtonian type behavior or power law type behavior. The ones which exhibit Newtonian behavior after overcoming a yield stress are called Bingham plastics. Those which exhibit power law dynamic type behavior after overcoming a yield stress are known as Herschel Bulkley fluids. One example of a Bingham plastic is the toothpaste that you used to polish your grill this morning. An example of a Herschel Bulkley fluid would be peanut butter. Bingham plastic and Herschel Bulkley fluids follow the same formulas for Newtonian and power law dynamic fluids with the addition of an extra term used to account for the yield stress. Flow behavior is not always apparent by visual inspection. However, a piece of lab equipment called a consistometer can help. A consistometer consists of a chamber with a door and a slightly angled ramp. This device measures flow empirically by measuring how far a fluid can flow down the ramp over a period of time after the door has been opened. This instrument gives us a measure of consistency. 
which keep in mind, consistency is not the same thing as viscosity. This can be useful to compare fluid flows, but not necessarily for any kinds of calculations. That is because consistometer's unit of measurement is unique to the device. Meaning however long it may take for a fluid to flow down the ramp will not give you the tools you may need to calculate viscosity or shear rate. For measuring material properties that can be quantified and used for calculations, the best tool for that job is called a rheometer. With this fancy piece of machinery, we can measure stress over shear rate. This data can be used to gain information about fluid flow and to classify which type of behavior it is exhibiting. Until next time, folks, tune in for more adventures in the world of rheology.